Rub up your engines. Captain Bill Baird says, Scotty, why are European cars so bad in the U.S.? In the U.K., most cars are either European or Japanese. I drive a 15-year-old Renault. Well, it's because they often sell different models in the United States. Take Mercedes as an example. For years, they were more interested in selling uber high-tech expensive luxury cars in the United States. Where in Europe they were using them for taxi cabs and I saw an ice cream truck when I was in London that was a Mercedes-Benz. The same thing with Renault. They tried selling higher-end cars in Citroën and Peugeot and they all ended up pulling out of the United States a long time ago. You're getting run-of-the-mill everyday drivers in Europe and the UK and they seem to be more reliable. I met a guy with the same thing with a Renault when I was in London. He loved them. He kept buying them and he liked the cars. But those are more basic cars. They tried to sell the luxury ones in the United States thinking Americans have all kinds of money. Well, they want a car that doesn't break and the luxury cars they were sending over, they had a tendency of breaking down a lot and that's why they're gone. They don't sell them here anymore. <laughs> Simon Huang says, Scotty, what's the worst oil change you've ever done? Okay, it was years ago. I was changing the oil on a Triumph Spitfire sports car that a woman owned. And I checked the dipstick and it didn't even read anything. And when I took the oil crankcase bolt out, coffee cup oil, that's about it. <laughs> and when I took the filter housing off, the paper inside was like cornflakes, all mushy. Of course, it burned a lot of oil, and then the engine was rattling because the bearings were shot. She, she basically ruined the engine. I said, well, you know, how often have you changed the oil? And the thing had like 50,000 miles on it. She never changed the oil. <laughs> It was just, she kept adding it as it burnt, but even then she didn't add it often enough because there was only a cup left when I drained it out. So. Penila Gustafson Scotty Avasab 985 runs perfect, but it stinks of petrol when it stands and stops. No leaks can be found. Any ideas? Does your car smell of gasoline? You can watch that. If you don't see any leaks, that means it's vapor smell. Vapor smells can be very hard to find course change the gas cap. The EVAP system, that's the anti-pollution system, has a charcoal canister and if you go near that and you smell it and it's leaking then replace the charcoal canister in a vapor vent. That's what often leaks on those things as they age. They just get old and the old system breaks and the valve sticks open and then it just vents it directly out of the atmosphere when it's supposed to hold it and reburn it in the engine. So check that first. Drip City says, does anyone here know how to fix dashboard lights that don't work? Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I need help. Okay, the dashboard lights are built into your entire dash module. So the first thing is, you say they're coming on and off. What you want to do is pull the dash out. Usually just a few clips, they pop out and then there's four screws and the whole thing comes out. You want to check the connector that connects it for the main wires. That can get dirty or corroded. Spray it with some spray electrical cleaner, put it back on. And also, you got a dimmer switch, right? Well, sometimes those dimmer switches go bad. So what you might want to do is turn the dimmer switch a little bit one side or the other. And then if it stops dimming and then brightening and then nothing at all, you know that that switch is breaking down. And you can either just buy that switch or if you're cheapskate like me, you can cut the two wires that go to the switch and then just splice them together and it'll have full power all the time. I've done that many times. New Edge Mustang said, hey Scotty, you got me into this 98 Lexus. Is it worth it to find some old factory seats to replace or get aftermarket. That thing's too old. It's 21 years old. The seats are going to be worn. You go to a junkyard, they're going to be all beat up. If you really like them, do what my customers do. Just find a place that reupholster seats. There's lots of guys that do it. They're not cheap, but a good guy does a really good job. If they're leather, you have a leather guy do it. If they're fabric, you have a fabric guy do it. You can get them reupholstered. There are a lot of custom-made seat covers that look excellent. I've used many over the years. Now, for an excellent one that's custom made for your car, you're going to pay at least 150 bucks per seat cover. They're not cheap. Those can look excellent if you get the custom one that's made for your car or see what the reupholsters charge. There's only four bolts holding each seat in. It's not hard taking it out and giving somebody the seat. Richard Bradley says, Scotty, I thought you died. Yes, the uh, rumors of my death have uh, <laughs> long been around, you know. Hey, I'm only 65 years old. My great-grandfather conked out when he was 95, and he only did that because he had pneumonia. If he wouldn't have had pneumonia, he probably would have lasted even longer, you know. If you keep busy and keep your mind active, who knows how long you're going to last. I see people dropping like flies around me. They retire. Then a few years later, they're dead. You got to keep yourself going. Do something you like doing. I love doing this. I have fun helping people all over the world out. I mean, you can't beat what I'm doing, so I don't plan on dying anytime soon. <laughs>
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.